Hey weirdos, how are you? We're back. So, <clears throat> this week, we're at a different place we're in, not far, about two miles out of Newtown Mount Kennedy. So, uh, that way is going to bring us towards Roundwood, and behind us here is Newtown Mount Kennedy. So, I'm going to tell you a little bit about this place. This it's now known as River Lodge, I think River Lodge is now, it's Trotter House, okay? And Trotter House have a history, a horrible, horrible history. Um, in actual fact, um, my mother, she's from this area originally, she's from a, a, a farming family in this area, but she went to school in this uh, place. I'm going to call it anything other than that, a place, a horrible place. And it was even a horrible place, can you imagine, when the nuns were running it? And uh, what I'm going to do now, and you know we've tested your imagination before, what I'm going to do is I want you to look into my eyes and when I click my fingers I want you to imagine an old woman sitting in a jeep, smoking a cigarette, drinking a Costa cappuccino, telling this story. Okay, so you, you went to school in Trotter, didn't you, before? Did. That was before, obviously it was turned into a... A yeah, home for delinquents. It's only the eighth they turned into. Yeah, so tell us about your experience there when you were seven years of age. And what was the sister's name? Sister Borgie, was Sister it? Sister Borgie was the Reverend Mother. Yeah, and what did she do to you? Bet me around the, the place with a belt at lunchtime. Right, for no reason? For no reason. And of course other kids were beaten as well. Yeah, every child was beaten. And uh, she, she locked you into the classroom yeah. one day after school as well, didn't she? Yeah, when the, when the little ones went home. And what time of the year was that? In the winter, in the middle of the winter. And no lights, nothing, in no, a pitch no dark nothing. classroom? Pitch dark. And what time did you get out at then? About half six or seven. And you should have been gone home at half one, is that right? Yeah, usually got home about half three or four or seven. Half three or four, okay. And. Did you, uh, did, was there anyone out looking for you? My only my father, the nuns didn't care. The nuns come down to lock up and found me in this classroom crying. And you found, you, did you find your father on the way home my on horseback? My father horse came on horseback, he was a farmer. Yeah. And looking for me. were you telling me before that the, the nuns, they used to wear a, a very loose leather belt? That's right. I was hanging down to the to their knees. And they'd take that off. What would they do when they no, took the it off? They wouldn't. They'd just rise it and they'd cut the flesh off you with it. Just hit you with it? Across the legs and the arms. You couldn't wear bare arms in the summer. Because mm. your arms were bruised from the staff. Well, it's no wonder that that place, Trudder, became such a place of horrors really afterwards. Um, Oh, it's not a surprised. place of horror for me anyway. Yeah, and that, and that was before the really bad things started happening. That was happening. when I was a child. Okay, well listen, thanks for that. Well done guys, and I hope you enjoyed that story. And I'm still amazed at your ability to imagine stuff. So, as you know, I suppose you've imagined that this probably would have been when she was going to school in the 30s, pre-World pre War II kind of time. and. I suppose kindness wasn't a thing that would have been pushed forward in schools anyhow. But what I have to do with this, and uh, maybe this could be the biggest shot of the night for you, okay? Uh, shortly after I left college, yes, I actually went to college. I have been educated. What a shock. Uh, I left college anyhow, and I started working as a press photographer for a, a newspaper. And shortly after that, and you know, whatever you learn in college doesn't really prepare you for uh, door knocking and stuff like that. So I was put on a story where I had to go and take photographs at Wicklow Court. And uh, it was for a guy called Brendan Kelly. Now, I think he was the first guy that was convicted of any kind of paedophilia here or whatever. You know, this would have been. Uh, look, I, I don't know the years, you can look it up yourself. Uh, uh, I'm going to say something like 94, 95, something like that, okay? I wasn't long in the, in the game of press photography anyhow because it, it, it was very poignant for me at the time. Anyhow, we went to take the photographs and whatever and it was just considered, it was far too serious of course to even co co case to be heard in Wicklow. So it went on and the case was then pursued in the Central Criminal Court in Dublin and that guy 
if I remember correctly, Brendan Kelly, he was from Galway, I think. Now, I'm doing this all off, the, off, off, off my head here tonight. I haven't really re-researched it as such, but I think he was from Galway. Uh, definitely. My Cullen, okay, Galway. that that is in Galway. Yeah, so, and yet again, if memory serves me correctly, we'll take a walk up anyhow and have a look. And Natalie can give you a tan. Natalie's actually here tonight. I don't have a mega long arm to videotape this <laughs> myself. Say Hi hello, God. Natalie. Hello, Natalie. Hello, Natalie. Hi, guys. <laughs> so, this is it. Yeah, River Lodge. Okay, so, you know, if there's an absolutely horrible place and you change it to something like River Lodge or, you know, River Bank, all of a sudden, once you have water involved in the name, all the, all, all the badness flows down away, and away with it. I think it's owned by the Wicked County Council now and I think we're trespassing, but that's neither here nor there. Um, so, anyhow, this Brendan Kelly guy, at the time, uh, this, this was turned into a, a home uh, for delinquent and traveling, the traveling community in the mid 70s, around 1975 that was. And there was a vast amount of paedophilia went on in here. This Brendan Kelly guy being the first one. And um, then it went on to be uh, D Duncan McKeynes, is it? Mm -hmm. Duncan McKeynes, yeah. He was even worse. He was a beast, absolute beast entirely. But uh, this Brendan Kelly, they had a, a caravan in Glen Malore and a lot of the, the kids were brought by Brendan, Brendan from here to Glen Malore and he had his, his horrible ways with them there. We'll have a walk around the side in the back here anyhow. So Shane, what year was it when your mother would have went here? Roughly-ish. Well, I, I, I'd say, you know, 30s, that kind of time I'd imagine. And that sister? Sister Superior, what was her name? Well, she, she named it in the interview, Sister Borgies. Yeah, she did name that when she was talking about it. So there's no doubt about it. This place has, I don't know if you can hear that, there's a buzzard over there. Uh, anyhow, th there's no doubt about it, this place has some horrible stories to tell, I would imagine, you know. Kids that never got to enjoy their childhood. No, they, they never got to enjoy their childhood and, and, you know, you'd wonder how many people are still affected to this day by the atrocities that went on in here. It's absolutely brutal, like, when you think about it. Um, and that McGowan's guy, what happened to him? I don't know really anything about him because I didn't photograph him or anything well, like that. I think that. he went off to Canada to live. Yeah. But he's actually, he died over there, so. Okay. Well, let's hope, and hopefully he was in pain. So, big old place. Mm. And there doesn't seem to be many people coming in here, I don't think. Now, there are people coming in here, but the, the, I suppose it's, it's too far out of Newtown for youngsters to be coming up drinking and stuff like that. And your mother would have lived, like, in the area, not too far away. Well, she was from the farming community, and they, they came in, to, they had a, a number of farms in the area. So, yeah, she was in this general area. And like I said, uh, or she said herself in, in that little interview that uh, basically when she did get out onto the road that night and th these are country roads folks and she was a little kid you know it doesn't matter the, the, the gap of time she's still a you know a seven or eight year old child that was out on the road in the middle of winter in the absolute dark and came across her father on horseback uh, looking for her you know and I, I suppose she didn't go into it very much but like I mean her father was uh, frantic about it and very distressed and you know it was probably a, 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 a time when you you couldn't speak ill of uh, anything to do with religion, religion or the church at, at home or anywhere they, 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 they were infallible I suppose superior 
Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, I don't think all in all there was much happiness here and I'm sure the nuns laid a good solid foundation of misery here for what was to, what was to happen then afterwards to continue and I do believe that, that there was a kind of a vibration or a misery put into, into this place that, you know, the likes of these bastards, Kelly and McGoins can come along then and capitalise on that, you know, and it, it's horrendous and I'm sure that this kind of stuff is still going on in society now, nowadays, you know, it, it is going on. We give things new fancy names like Tusla and whatever, but this stuff is still going on and it, it, it will go on until, you know, people really, really start to stamp this out. And I literally mean stamp it out, you know. Uh, It's a shame it's so peaceful as well. So we just walk up around. We, we'll uh, we have to kind of climb around there so before we can give you a look at the back. So we're going to just cut off there for a minute and we'll come back to you. Right, guys, we're nearly through now here to the back, and we'll give you a look. So this is it anyhow from the kind of back end here you can see there's a few people have been throwing stones up at it and you can hear the buzzard. Buzzards are fascinating and they're probably of all the birds of prey. I know you're not really here to find out about birds of prey, but they're probably the best parents of all the birds of prey. And you'll often see them late summer, heading into autumn, uh, flying in a cast of, of, of three members of the family because they look after their young for so long until they can really hunt very, very efficiently on their own. But anyhow, back to this. Yeah, so there we are now, we can see the the side of it and it's, it's closed a good few years now. You have to get in and have a look. Yeah. You know, when this broke initially about Trudder House in the, in the mid-90s, early to, to, to mid-90s and uh, I think initially with the Brendan Kelly one, there was over 200 witnesses came forward to give statements uh, to verify stuff that went on, you know. Like, I always say that, like, with cases like that, there's, you know, if you get a quarter of the amount of people that either witness anything or anything happened to them to come forward, uh, you're doing very well. And if you think about 200 witnesses to, to, to corroborate and uh, reinforce, uh, statements it's it's a shocking number of people and you know it, you can only you can only imagine what this place must have been like it must have been really like for kids uh, you know kids that have already had a bad uh, go at life to this mm -hmm. stage and then for this to happen it, it's even worse again and it's it must have been really like uh, hell on earth for them it has to have been you know so guys, we've really got not much more to tell you about here. It's it's a miserable one, I know, but uh, you know sometimes the miserable stories are the ones that have to be told. More so than anything else, it's it's not even a, a paranormal uh, thing or whatever. It's just really twisted, uh, abnormal. But we are haunted area collective. We we look into all these kind of things, and we will always have a, a certain bias from the stuff that I've done uh, as a. Uh, a photojournalist and in particular uh, kind of an investigative photojournalist we're always going to fall back to stuff like this because I find it very interesting and I do believe that these are stories that need to be told um, so guys happy Friday the 13th